You are anointed it. If it's going to work, it's going to be because you have made a firm decision that it's going to work for you. See, there's no room for doubt in the heart of a champion. There's no room for it. You see, Dorothea Brand wrote a book many years ago, and she said, the key to success, listen to this, it jumped out of the book on me, act as though it were impossible to fail, and you will not. Think of the wisdom of that. Imagine if you acted as though there's no way you could lose if you stayed on track, if you did what you were taught. There is no way you could lose. And you believe that. When would you quit? You'd never quit. He said, let me teach you something about the human mind. You know my background is in psychology. I taught it for years. I've been a researcher for years in human development and how the mind functions. And let me tell you something. There might be 8, 10, 12,000 people in this room. I don't even know how many, but I'm going to tell you this. How many people do you see up here? You see one. Well, let me tell you what I know that you're going to know when I'm finished. No two people in this room are going to hear the same thing from me. Isn't that interesting? There's a huge lesson to be learned by that observation. If that is true, and I know that it is, and I'll explain to you why, because each one of us go through life with what I call perceptional filters. There are parents, our belief systems, our religion, our ethnicity, our race, you name it. These are all out in front of every single one of us, our education, who influenced us, what are we basically made of? What kind of character do we have? Put these filters in front of you right now. They are you. And they're the only things that you can perceive the present moment through. Nobody gets past the filters. So in nanoseconds, all of that works in nanoseconds to tell you what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Now, given that that's true, who is creating me, me or you? Are you getting this? You are making me mean to you what your perceptions allow. That's why no, some people will leave here and they'll be changed forever. And others won't get a darn thing out of it. They'll just think it's hype and motivation and critical and what have you, and they'll leave here with that. Yet the people are hearing the same thing, aren't they? Huh? So this ought to help you when you're doing this business. I already know that if I do my job, that my job is to present, to offer in a relaxed, confident, ownership way. I've got a great opportunity. I hold it that way. I present it as an offer. Whether you laugh at it, whether you jump up and down, whether you jump forward, means nothing. Because that's only a beginning, isn't it? The only thing you want to observe is what you see with your eyes, not what you hear with your ears. Are they doing what the system requires them to do to get to the finish line. This is so simple. You can spare yourself a lot of emotional anguish wishing that people were going to do what you're observing they're not going to do. Do you hear me? So you need to recognize that since you're all going to hear different, but here's something else you don't know. You see me here, I got news for you. There's hundreds of people you don't see that taught me, my professors, my parents, the influences that I've had in my life, the books I've read, the studying I've done, they are now in me going through to you. So you're not hearing George alone. Nobody teaches alone. So we gather wisdom, we gather ideas, and if you have passion and you want to share them with people, you hope that you enliven their spirits that you give them an internal energy of conviction that says, I can do it, and they erase the past. The past is only a form of recollection in the memory. It is not real. It is what you pull forward, but here's what happens. All too many people keep reliving yesterday's mistakes, yesterday's hurts, yesterday's anguish, and their force, the life force they have is leaning back like a stranglehold. Or they're standing on their tiptoes with great anxiety, worrying about the future. So now you're like this, and in the middle is now. In the middle is the moment of life, and it's the only moment you've ever had. And if you're here five minutes from now, all you've got is another now.
When do we make a difference? When do we get started? When do we start studying? When do we change? If you keep waiting, it won't happen. You got to plant your flag. You got to say, I'm going to take this information and use it. Let me tell you what I know after all these years of talking to hundreds of thousands of people. Here's what I know. You already know what I'm saying to you is true. Do you know why? I speak to you to inner you, the you that knows, that may have forgotten. You see, each of us have at least two people in us. We got a little guy that's afraid of everything. Do you recognize them? And then you got a magnificent you that the Creator put in you to be magnificent. And you let that voice whisper. Hmm? Whisper. And in your moments of solitude, in quietness, the whisper starts to haunt you and sometimes you shut it down if it says you must change. Aren't we masters at it, huh? We need to start learning to listen to the whisper because the whisper is ready to give you what you need. The whisper knows you're a miracle. You see, you were born to succeed. You were born to win. What kind of a creator would put people on a planet and say, go ahead, losers, have at it? So I want to give you some insights. I've gone after this information with passion. And I spent many, many hours contemplating. And it used to bother me a lot why so many magnificent human beings did so little with their lives. Have you ever asked that question? And to me, mediocrity is not doing much with the life you have. Mediocrity is just settling in with the common things around you and getting anesthetized away from greatness. See, greatness responds to passion. We don't need to be cool. We need to get out there and shake the bushes. We need to get out there with pride in ourselves and what we have. We need to speak to people from conviction. You want your PhD in selling? I'll give it to you right now. It's nothing more than transferring a powerful conviction from a seller to a prospect. When you've got that in you, you're going to recruit. You don't limp up to nobody. You don't walk up and say, please look at my opportunity. The world is suffering out there, yes or no? People are hurting financially. And you know what? They pretend. Don't you know they pretend? They drive cars they shouldn't be in. They live in houses that they don't really own. They're doing all sorts of crazy things to impress who? People are suffering today. And Greg touched upon it this morning, and I hope you were listening. Seventy-some million baby boomers hitting the system. Ho, ho, ho. If you're not taking care of you and your family, you're not thinking. And I'm going to tell you right now, jobs alone ain't going to do it. We need a plan B. We need to turn off that TV that's nothing but a depressive machine to your spirit and your soul. And we need to get on the telephone and sit at kitchen tables and go to meetings and offer people hope and life for their futures. That's our job. When we start doing that, you won't walk around afraid of anybody. You're going to walk out there like Dorothea Brand said, act as though it were impossible to fail, and you will not. You've got every tool in the book here. I mean, can you imagine? Huh. DVDs, CDs, internet, know what's going. This is a cakewalk of money. But what if you're afraid of yourself? What if you're afraid to talk to somebody? Man, I worked with people.